For absolutely no horrifically terrifying reason at all, a lot of people have had way more free time over the last few weeks, and a bunch of those people are actually spending that time pretty productively. Finally finishing projects they started years ago, starting their own businesses, working towards their dreams, or just learning useful new skills. And right now, as of today, I've decided to become one of those people. Specifically, I decided to learn a new skill. The skill of baking. A graphics card. Yep, you heard that right. It's GPU baking time, and it's gonna be delicious. Now, if you haven't caught on already, in this video, I'll be trying to fix this RX 480 graphics card using the oven method. What's the oven method, I hear the uninitiated among you ask? Well, essentially, a dead graphics card, or pretty much any other dead PC component, goes into the oven and then comes out a little less dead. And if that sounds stupid, it's because it is, but also it's not. See, that's because the science behind all of this isn't as stupid as it sounds. Graphics cards, motherboards, and other PC components make use of circuit traces made up of either copper or aluminum to connect the little components on the PCB itself to each other. And sometimes during the life cycle of whatever component it is, those traces can sort of break. This can happen due to a lot of reasons. Um, the main ones kind of being like dropping the PCB itself and the traces breaking that way, or it can just happen naturally by the heating and cooling of the PCB. But just like the heating of the PCB can actually kill the board, we can also use heat to bring it back to life. Those broken traces can actually be remelted and forced to connect again by using a source of heat. People with more tools and experience call this reflow soldering, and typically they use specifically built reflow ovens or even heat guns to get the job done. I am not one of those people, and I'm betting most of you aren't either, which only really leaves us with two options. You could try to reflow those traces using a hair dryer set to max, but then you kind of risk blowing the solder where it's not supposed to be. So the only real option we have is our ovens in our kitchens. Now I have actually used this specific method a few years ago with my PlayStation 3. While replaying Skyrim for the like, I don't know, at least 137th time, the system gave me the dreaded ring or light of death, I don't know what it was with PlayStation, but it gave me a little light which essentially indicated that the system had overheated and then broken, I'm not sure what exactly it means, but anyway, the PS3 was dead. And after using the method, I'll be going... Okay? But after using the method, I'll actually be going over in this video, I was able to bring the PlayStation 3 back to life for another like six or seven months or so. Granted that after that, the PS3 did kind of die again. And then I tried the method again and it did actually work a second time. Only this time it only lasted for another three or four months. But still, it brought it back to life. So I'm gonna try the exact same thing with our RX 480. Now the first time I actually plopped this thing into my system, everything was fine. It got me into Windows and all that good stuff. But as soon as I tried to clean reinstall the drivers to get this thing working properly, uh, things got a little weird. I got a lot of artifacting and the car just ended up dying completely. I tried the usual quick fix methods and a few other methods that I can't remember right now, but point is this thing is actually dead. Let me just show you what happens if I put this thing in my old Intel system. Okay, let's start her up and see what happens. As you can see, the light does come on and ow. The fans are spinning, but, oh, we do have a display, except, okay, so there was some artifacting, and I'm guessing as soon as the driver actually kicked in, the car just went and completely died. Now, before we can actually go ahead and toss this thing into an oven, we have to take some precautions. More specifically, we need to remove everything that is not PCB. So that includes the back plate, that includes the shroud, with the fans, with the heat sink, all that needs to go before this thing actually goes into the oven. So yeah, I guess it's time to disassemble. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so here we can actually see that the thermal compound that was on here didn't dry up or anything like that. So I don't think that caused any of the graphics cards issues. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention this, but we also need to remove all these thermal heat pads like over here, 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 and here, along with the plastic little spacers around the GPU itself, and this little heat pad over here. And that should be a bare PCB. Now we still have some plastic, obviously in the form of this right here, these fan and RGB connectors, but I haven't really seen those as being a major issue with the oven method. But yes, now that we have our bare PCB ready to go, just gonna clean off some of the thermal paste there, but after that we should be ready to go. And let's just, 
throw this thing into an oven. Hey, so we're actually at my dad's house because his oven is actually just a little more reliable than mine. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is head on over to the oven and set this dial right over here to provide heat from both the top and bottom. Now, if your oven does have a fan function to evenly spread the heat around, you can probably leave that on, but if you know it blows especially hard, then just leave it off because it can actually move around the components on the PCB itself and nobody wants that. Now, the second thing you're gonna wanna do is set your temperature to around 370 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. About 190. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just let it preheat for a bit. Probably gonna give it about 15 minutes or so to preheat. But in the meantime, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so we'll actually be placing the GPU on this little thing right here. But obviously you don't want the GPU to make direct contact with this because it might actually burn or something. So what we're gonna have to go ahead and do is make four little balls from this tin foil. Now obviously this doesn't need to be the most perfect ball in the world, but as long as it's big enough not to fall through there and lifts the GPU up from the grid over here, then it's fine. This is like the most depressing baking show ever. Now all you're gonna wanna do is place these balls under each of the corners of the GPU, making sure not to actually touch any of the important bits. So just right on the edges. Now this should keep our GPU lifted up from the grid itself, making sure not to actually burn the PCB. So now that we've got everything nicely set up and ready to go, we just need to wait a little bit for the oven to preheat a little more, and then we'll pop it in. So it looks like our oven is preheated to 190 degrees Celsius or 370 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think we can pop this baby in. Here we go, just like that. Don't burn yourself, ow. Cool, so now we just leave it in there for about 10 minutes to bake. I'm probably gonna give it like 12-ish minutes just to make sure, but 10 minutes to be safe, that should get the job done. So, let's wait it out. Okay, we're coming up at about 12 to 13-ish minutes that it's been in there now, and I'm starting to smell something weird, so I think it's time to take it out. Hasn't melted completely, so that's that's good. Uh, I really wish I had oven mitts right now. There's definitely a very electronic burnish smell coming from it, but as far as I can remember, that's kind of normal. So now we're just gonna let it cool for about 30 minutes or so before I head back home and put it all together and see if it actually works. Ugh. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half, so safe to say that this thing is as cool as it's gonna get. So all that's left to do is put it back together and pop it into the system. Oh, and one thing I noticed during the baking process was along with that weird smell, something else that kind of happened, so to say, is that these little connectors over here used to be white. They're a little discolored now. Now this is something I've seen before in the other boards and PlayStations I've resurrected. It just gets a little discolored on the white plastic bits here, but that shouldn't really affect the board's working at all. So yeah, let's put this thing back together. All right, all that's left to do is to put this thing back into that system and see if we actually fixed it or not. Any of you wanna make some bets? Now's the time to do it. Okay, moment of truth time. Let's see, lights coming on like before, but will we get a display? And if we do, ah. Uh... No, no. <sighs> Looks like this particular experiment was a failure. I was actually super confident that this was gonna work. So much so that I'm actually going to try it again. So stick around for that. The way I see it, I probably didn't leave the card in long enough for it to actually properly reflow. Or maybe I just didn't let the oven preheat long enough. Or maybe it really is just beyond saving at least with my limited tools and experience. Now, as confident as I am that this method does actually work, I did get it to work with my PS3 and with an old 8800 GT I had laying around, so I know it does work. But that being said, you shouldn't even think about trying this method if your card or whatever is still under warranty. Just the disassembly of the GPU itself will void its warranty, as you can see with the broken sticker right there. And if that doesn't void the warranty, 
sticking it in the oven definitely will. You also risk breaking the thing even more than it already was, way beyond the point where someone who actually fixes these things for a living can actually help you out. You may also risk damaging your oven or even your lungs with whatever fumes get set off when you burn or melt plastic and PCB and just electronics in general. This method should be your absolute last hope in a very long list of last hopes. That being said, if you're like me and you have nothing to lose, you've tried everything else, and you're comfortable with all and any of the risks involved in this entire process, then bake that shit up, yo. If your only other option is to throw your piece of tech out, then give it a shot. If it doesn't work, you're just back to where you started. And if it does, you save yourself the cost of whatever replacement you're gonna get. Or you can even donate it to someone who actually needs it. And speaking of people in need, I am in need. The need for likes and subs. So if you enjoyed this stupid failure of an experiment video, then go ahead and do both of those things. And while you're at it, check out my Patreon link down below. My awesome patrons get their names in the credits of all my videos, and when possible, I'll be posting videos on there way before they go live on the channel, along with some behind the scenes stuff too. So if you want to get a piece of that, check it out. Anyway, thanks to the three or four people who actually watched till the end of the video. I hope to see all of you in the next one. So stay safe and cheers.